Okay, so in this video I want to start talking about Bernoulli equations. So this is a topic for uh, that you usually see in differential equations. And a Bernoulli equation is of the form y prime equals a of t multiplied by y plus f of t multiplied by y raised to the power of n, where n is not equal to 0 and 1. So kind of the issue here is um, usually you see this when you're talking about linear equations. And the idea is, if this term y to the n wasn't there, so if it just looked like this instead, we have techniques to solve these types of equations. But the problem is, when we throw in this term y to the n, those techniques no longer work. Okay, so that's kind of the, 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 the whole point here. So... Again, just to point out, linear, just to remind you, so linear equations only involve y prime and y, along with some other terms. But again, you don't see, for example, like y squared or y to the third power, is what I'm trying to say. So if we had an equation of the form, basically what I said just a second ago, suppose the y to the n wasn't there, so y prime equals a to the t multiplied by y plus f of t, or equivalently, maybe the terms involving y and y prime are on the same side. If we had an equation of that form, we know how to solve it, and we know how to solve this using integrating factors. Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the theory of, of why this works, and just sort of justify some formulas. If you want to see an actual concrete example of me flying through this stuff, check out the next video because here I just want to really derive the formulas that I'm going to use in the second video. And in the second one, I'll kind of use them without comment. I'll say, oh yeah, we already derived these and this is why we can do it and it'll just be sort of a plug and chug procedure. So, okay, so let's start here. So suppose that we've got this equation y prime equals a of t multiplied by y plus f of t multiplied by y raised to the power of n. I'm going to be lazy, so again, n is not equal to 0 or 1. So what happened was, was good old Leibniz, one of the, uh, the, 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 the creators, inventors, discoverers, founders of calculus, he realized, he said, if you make a, a change of variable, so if we do a little change of variable here, We can be clever and do a change of variable, and what we're going to do is we're going to let z, or z for everyone outside of the USA, we're going to do a substitution. We're going to let z equal y raised to the power of 1 minus n. And it turns out when we do this change of variable, we're actually going to get a linear equation. It's not going to be in y prime anymore. It's not going to be in terms of z. But just replace the y's with z's, and you'll see that we end up with a linear equation. So let's justify that first off. So okay, so first off, let's notice a couple things. So notice that um, our dz dt term, because again, we're going to have a dz dt or a z prime term after we get finished. Well, to compute that, we're going to have to use the change rule. So that's excuse me, the chain rule. So that's the uh, dz over dy multiplied by dy over dt. Well, if we take the derivative of z with respect to y, so now I'm just looking um, back up here. So now I'm just looking here. If I take the derivative of this with respect to y, well, what am I going to get? So um, if I take the derivative, well, the power comes out front. What do we do? We take 1 away. Now notice this is 1 minus n. If we subtract 1, we'll just be left with the power of y raised to the negative n. Okay, so, so far so good. And then we still have our dy dt hanging out. I'm going to rewrite the dy dt as y prime because that's what we have up here. So again, dy dt, it's just the same thing as y prime. So here's our dz dy. And here's our dy dt. So again, just using the chain rule. You see this you know, first semester calculus. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to do one thing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y prime. So if I solve for y prime, I could divide both sides of this equation by uh, 1 minus n. So I would have 1 divided by 1 minus n. 
To get rid of y raised to the negative n power, I could multiply both sides by y raised to the power of n. Then I'm going to be left with dz dt on the left side still, and that's going to equal y prime. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start substituting things in. So I'm going to use this, this expression, and I'm just going to plug it back into this very first equation that we came up with. All right, so let me get a little piece of paper here. So, all right. So y prime, let's replace the y prime with 1 over 1 minus n times y to the n dz over dt. That equals a multiplied by t. So I'm just going to fill in the right side. So I'm going to jumble everything up. I'm going to have z's and y's here for a minute. So there's y plus we have... Um, so we still have our, excuse me, our f of t multiplied by y to the n. thought I did something wrong for a second. So all I'm doing is I just filled in my, my y prime. So what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to solve for dz dt. So to solve for dz dt, I would have to multiply uh, both sides of the equation by 1 minus n. And I would also have to divide by uh, y to the n power. So I'm going to have dz over dt. So I'm going to multiply by 1 minus n, and I'm going to divide by y to the n. Okay, so now I'm just going to leave the right side of my equation alone, and then we'll just simplify here. So I'm really going through all the steps here. You could certainly do this a little faster than I am. So okay, so there's dz dt. Let's see, if I distribute, I'm going to have 1 minus n. I'm going to have this function a of t, and no, notice now that I would have y to the first divided by y to the n. Well, y to the first divided by y to the n, that's going to give me y to the power of 1 minus n. Hey, that looks familiar. And then we're going to have plus, I'm going to have 1 minus n. Well, I'm going to have y to the n divided by y to the n, that's just going to leave me with 1. And then we still have this function f of t floating around. And now, again, what was our substitution? We said that z was equal to y raised to the 1 minus n power, so we can just plug that in. So now we have dz dt, or z prime, that equals 1 minus n, multiplied by a to the t. I've got y to the 1 minus n, but we said, oh, we're going to replace that with z. And then we still have this 1 minus n multiplied by f of t. And hey, now we are in business. Why are we in business? Because we did this change of variable, and now instead of using y's, we're using z's. But notice now I don't have any of these weird powers of z floating around. I have z prime, I have a z. Again, depending on you know what the power, y to some power, you know, maybe it's two, three, four, five, six, a billion, whatever. You know, we're just going to have a constant here. We'll have 1 minus that power, 1 minus that power. we still got our function a of t and f of t. But again, we've still just got this z. So notice, it really looks a lot like this form that we started off with. It says we've got some, some prime, we've got some function, we've got that variable to the first power, and then just some other function of t. Again, you could have some number multiplied out front. So lo and behold, we have now done it. We have done a change of variable. This is now linear. And we can now solve it. We can now solve it by using integrating factors. So again, in my next video, I'm going to do an example uh, relatively quickly, and where did my example go that I'm going to do, because I have it here. So just in case you want to see the example that I'm going to do, I'm going to solve the following. I'm going to solve t squared times y prime plus 2t multiplied by y minus y to the third equals 0, and 
That'll be noticed in this term, I've got this y prime and this y floating around, which is good. This term involving y to the third power, that's kind of the issue, and that's where our change of variable will come in. So stay tuned, I'm going to use all of these formulas I just developed in this example. And also, I'm going to go through the integrating factor part a little quickly, so if you've forgotten about that, you may want to, to take a gander at that as well.